how that many times we get discouraged and then we wonder how in the world are we ever going to make it through these terrible times in which we live. And then we think a little bit and the times is even going to be worse and even beyond our imagination. Then how are we going to overcome our faults? Should I call them sins also? And uh, other disappointments and other discouragements and then finally give up. Well, our scripture reading has something to say a little bit about that, you know, in Revelation 12, 11. And it says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives until the death. Before we go any further, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you that you are the almighty one and that all things can be accomplished and that we might be overcomers. You have given us many wonderful promises. May we learn how to claim them and how to have these things happen in our lives. Now send your Holy Spirit to guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, on the bulletin that has all the announcements, there's a pastor's gems of truth which is taken from the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary. <clears throat> the secret of overcoming sin. We become overcomers by helping others to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The keeping of the commandments of God will yield in us an obedient spirit and the service that is the offspring of such a spirit God can accept, taken from also from the letter 236 in, that was written in 1908 by Alan White. In our scripture reading, and it says that they overcame him. Who's the they? Who's the they? They are us, aren't they? Yeah. And they overcame him. Who's the him? The devil. Yeah. Because in that chapter, they're talking about the great red dragon. And the great red dragon is the devil, primarily. And Ellen White tells us that the great, uh, that the great red dragon is primarily the devil, but secondarily, it was papal Rome and uh, pagan Rome. But to overcome him, and he's the greatest and our greatest enemy, it's by him that all things, all sinful sin in this world became here. He's the author of it. So we need to overcome him by the blood of the lamb. Now what's the blood of the lamb? I asked myself that thing. Overcome by the blood of the lamb? Now I being a mechanic, I always think of using tools to do a job. Well, here's a job to be done to overcome. So, the blood of the lamb, is it some kind of something that I can use to be an overcomer? Can I use it like a tool to repair something? Well, yeah, something needs to be repaired, and that's my uh, character. So, can I use the blood of the lamb? 
well, how do I go about using the blood of the Lamb to overcome these terrible things in my life? Oh, I've tried often. I've done all kinds of little things to try and get myself in the right pathway and do the right thing. None of it ever seemed to work. So, the blood of the Lamb. All right, so I begin to think about what does the blood of the Lamb consist of? Well, we go back far enough to Egypt. It was the blood of the Lamb that was put on the doorposts and on the lintel. Was it that blood that saved the firstborn? Is it the blood of lambs that actually saves us or helps us? The blood of Jesus? Or is it believing in the promises? When I, if I were back in Egypt and when I would have used the hyssop to put the blood on the doorposts and on the lentil, I would have been expressing my belief and my faith in who? In Moses? In Aaron? No. My belief in Christ. So, why was the lamb's blood spilled? Why was Jesus' blood spilled? For what reason? For? All right, let's turn to Romans 5.10. Now, you're going to have to give me a little time to do this because my fingers don't work too good anymore. Romans 5. Verse 10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, By what? By the death of his son. By the blood of the lamb. So, the blood of the lamb was spilt to reconcile us to God. So, uh, the blood of the lamb was to cover our sins. And was for forgiveness. But what does the rest of the verse say? Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The blood of the lamb also represents what? When we turn to Leviticus, I've got to get my paper that I wrote some of these on. Leviticus 17, 14, and it tells us there that the blood is the life. So the blood of Jesus represents the life of Jesus. And the life of Jesus wasn't that from the time he was a babe till the time he was crucified on the cross? Wasn't that his life? So... uh, The life of the Lamb. We overcome by the life of the Lamb, by the blood of the Lamb, by being reconciled to God. After we are reconciled to God, God sees us as if we have never sinned. And so, would he hesitate to bless us and to give us the power to overcome? I don't think so. Because... A father or a mother wouldn't hesitate to give a good gift to their children. They wouldn't hesitate. 
And as it is written, oh, you wouldn't give your son a, for bread a, a stone, would you? Or for a fish, a serpent, would you? No. So, hey, that's something that we can th thank our mothers for. They take care of us. They want the best for us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I thought I was pretty, now I can look back and say I was pretty dumb. Mother was doing things for me that, hey, I couldn't do for myself. So this is the same way with the lamb. The lamb spilled his blood for us to do something for us that we can't do for ourselves. So in this way, a mother and a father represents or demonstrates to us what God is like and what the Lamb is like because Jesus and God were one. Okay, now let's turn to Colossians one twenty seven. What is that? That's Galatians, Ephesians, <coughs> Philippians, and then Colossians, isn't it? Chapter 1, verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, can you see the life of Jesus in me? How about in you? Could you see it in your parents? Yes. There was a time whenever I said to my father while he was still living, I said, Dad, I see in you uh, just a, a small characteristic here and there that is like Christ. You see, we can see that if we're looking for it. And so, it is the blood of the Lamb is Christ in you, the hope of, the, hope of glory. So, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb means that we overcome with Christ in us. That's how we can overcome. We don't do it on our own. We do it because we let Christ live in us. For that is our hope and glory. Okay. Let's look at another part of our, of our verse. And our verse said that uh, by the word of our testimony... What do you think that testimony is? What is that testimony? Oh, that's going out and giving Bible studies. Huh? Oh, that's going telling people all about Jesus. Oh, yes, that's part of it. But there is a part that, some, that all of us can do. Every one of us. Did you ever hear that saying that a, a picture is worth a thousand words? Yeah, it is. Okay. If, what kind of picture are, are you seeing when you look at me? What kind of picture are people, is your neighbor seeing when they look at you? How about every Sabbath morning? You get awake and you say, hmm, 
I don't feel too good today. I think I'll stay at home. What kind of picture are you painting? Don't tell me. Uh, but suppose I decide, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to get up and go to Sabbath school. Today's Sabbath, and so I'm going to go to Sabbath school. So I get up, and I dress, and I begin to look at some of the clothes. Well, I, I th well maybe I ought to wear the best clothes I have, because it isn't. Christ in me, isn't he the, my king? Isn't he my redeemer? Isn't he the almighty God? So I put on my best clothes. They may not look the best to someone else, but they're the best I have. And so I go to Sabbath school and church. I come in, oh, about 15 minutes after the service starts, or just in time, so I'm here to hear what the preacher has to say, and don't listen to me. Wouldn't you think it would be honoring Christ to be here on time? Yes. Do we go to the doctor's office on time, or do we go 15 minutes late? Well, there's one time I know you won't be late, and that's at your funeral. You won't be late then. But please, paint a picture that Jesus is important Amen. and that he is the glory that is found in you. That's his glory. Amen. Now, that brings about obedience. So the word of my testimony is seen in my obedience. My obedience to the commands of God. And, well, I'll wait until I'm old, then I'll do it. God tells us to do it while I'm still young. And while I'm still capable of doing it. All right, that's the beginning, because in our pastor's gem of truth, it says the keeping of the commandments of God will yield in us an obedient spirit, and the service that is the offspring of such a spirit, God can accept. Oh, then I guess uh, that obedience is what God will accept. And so I need to paint that picture because that's even worth a thousand words. It's more than what I can even, well, let's say I go down the street and now I'm trying to tell people about Jesus. Hey, if they can't see it in me, and if they don't know I have, haven't been with uh, Jesus as I go to, down the street to my neighbors and talk with them, hey, if they can't see it, they're not going to be interested in it. So, and for me to be able to share Jesus with you or with anyone, he's got to live here within me. And so he tells us that the hope of glory is Christ in you. And 2 Peter 1.4 tells you that through these promises that God has given us, we can become a partaker of the divine nature. Now, what is the divine nature? Was Jesus obedient to the Father? Yes. Well, that must be part of it, Amen. of the divine nature. So through these precious promises that God has given for us, we will be able to partake and become and become overcomers. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
So when you're so discouraged and you're so feeling like nobody loves me no more, did you ever get that feeling? Yeah. Sometimes we do. And especially when I was younger, I kind of felt, eh, nobody cares anymore. Why? Why? Why bother? And sometimes we get that way whenever we're talking to people about, about their eternal salvation. They don't seem to pay any attention. Well, why should I try anymore? But no, let's not give up. There's a promise. And Jesus promises that in the end, he will be with me always, even until the end. And that means he's going to live in me, even until the end. That is, if I choose to let him. So, let's go on and let's look at something else. In Matthew uh, 16, uh, 24, Let's turn to that, Matthew 16, 24. No, it's not Matthew 24, it's Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In other words, for Jesus to be in me, I'm going to have to follow him. For his character to be developed in me, I need to follow him. So, I need to, uh, what does it say? Deny myself. All right, we had some pretty good discussions in our, in our Sabbath school class. We talked about all kinds of things, and one of the things we were talking about was love, and that there are different kinds uh, kinds of love and so on. And also we find that in uh, John fifteen twelve, we are to love one another as God loved us, as Christ loved us. So how and why was it the lamb able to give his, shed his blood for us. What drove him to shed his blood for us? He came willingly. And he said on the cross himself, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. What, what was behind him that caused him to do such a thing? What kind of love? I heard someone say agape love. All right, I'm going to ask you another question. What's agape love? Can I, uh, can I add something to what you're thinking? God's love, agape love, mm -hmm. is self-sacrificing love. Yes. A self-sacrificing love. Did not the Father, John 3.16, did not the Father so love the world that he gave his only begotten Son 
Oh, he could have said, let them men die. But no, he sacrificed his own son. He denied himself of keeping his son with him. He let him go. And Jesus had the same kind of love that his father had. A self-sacrificing love. He gave up all heaven and all the, the pomp, the joy, whatever it is, heaven. He gave it all up to come to this world. So he sacrificed all that for you and I. That's a sacrificing love. Now if we turn to, uh, let me see. Is it John 15, 12? Uh, no. Uh, it's Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Starting with verse 5 in Philippians 2, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What did our scripture reading say? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not life even unto death. They also possessed that self-sacrificing love. That's also a part of overcoming, of how we can overcome. We can overcome because we sacrifice something. You remember that whenever we have the, uh, uh, all the food that we bring here, and everything on, on Sabbath for the poor and so on. All that food and everything, you had to do without something to bring it. Okay, you had to sacrifice something. Hey, that's just the beginning of self-sacrificing love. To do that and to help the poor. And to, to be of help to your fellow man. That's just the beginning. Let's let it grow to the point of where we are willing even to sacrifice love, the life, the whole life for Jesus. Boy, that's strong words. I ain't too sure I can live up to that. So I'm in the same boat as you are. I need the blood of the Lamb yes, to overcome. Yes, Not only that, but I need the life of Jesus mm -hmm. in my life. Yes, I need Him yes, to have control of me. Yes, amen. Because if He doesn't have control of me, then Satan will. Yes. And our scripture reading was that we overcome him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb yes. and the word of our testimony. Amen. There's power in the blood. There is, there is power in the blood. In the blood.